Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video, we are going to be talking about function overloading. This is the concept and then we're gonna get some hands-on stuff in the upcoming videos. So this is where we start getting into the really cool parts of programming. I'm super excited and I hope you guys are as well. But you know what I get really excited about? Sponsorships. Yeah, that's right. Embarcadero Rad Studio sponsored this series and I'd encourage you to check them out. I'll leave a link for you in the description. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. All right, so here's the thing. When you create a function, it's defined in your program. So here is an extremely practical function I just created that is going to do stuff for us. And this is established as a function in your program, meaning if you type it again, you're going to have a problem. So if in your code you do this, the compiler is going to complain that there is already, honestly, I'm not exactly sure what it'll say. It'll probably give you some really cryptic message, but it'll say something along the lines of, hey, do stuff has already been defined, or you're redefining a function that was already defined. But there is an exception to this rule. If you change the second version just a little bit, you can actually have two versions of the same function, basically the same name for the function, different arguments. So for example, we can create one that takes a string. Now the compiler is not going to complain because it basically sees these as two different functions. Now when you call this function, which one is it going to use? Well, that depends on the types of the arguments. So if in our code we call do something and we pass in hi as an argument, well, it's gonna say, hmm, should this go to the integer one or the string one? Well, clearly it should go to the string one and it's going to call that version of the function. This is the concept of overloading. It's when a function has multiple versions, but the same name. So do stuff has essentially two versions of the function. It has overloaded functionality. Now a common misconception, and this is not universal across all programming languages. So in C++, the return type is not part of determining if a function is unique. So the concept of having a function that's unique, basically, is this a valid overload? That is known as the method signature. So each one of these has a unique method signature. And again, the return type is not part of that signature. In other programming languages, it might be the case, but if you had two exact functions that had the same arguments and it had two different return types, that would not be okay. That would not be considered an overload. There has to be some other way to distinguish these functions besides the return type. So that is an important thing to know. That's for C++ specifically. Now here's an example of overloading. You might have a function to calculate the area of a square or rectangle like shape. <laughs> so let's say this returns a double and it's called area. Now, what kind of shapes can this use? Well, tons of stuff has area. So maybe you could distinguish, instead of having a bunch of different functions like square area and rectangle area, maybe it'd be possible to, to distinguish different shapes based on the arguments. So for example, if you have a square, well, all the sides are the same. So if you have one argument, then it should be assumed to be a square. If you have a rectangle, well, you might have two arguments like so. And in this situation, you might have the first overload being one argument of type int, the second overload having two arguments of type int, and then once you get into object-oriented programming, you might make a custom type known as a rectangle, which you can take as an argument. So there might be three overloads, and it would look like this. One with int x, or whatever you wanted to call it. You could just call it length, for example. One with two parameters here, the length and the width, which would be for a rectangle, and then another one with a custom type called rectangle. So this is just an example, and maybe you wouldn't wanna do this because it wouldn't be clear which area you're calculating, but if you have a very small application and you are the one who's primarily using these functions, it might be perfectly clear enough. That's up to you. 
As a side note, and this might not become completely clear until a couple videos from now, overloading is not designed for optional parameters. So for example, if you have a function where if you don't pass in an argument, you want to default it to the value 10. That's not something you would use overloading for. You can actually use default argument values, and we're, we're gonna go through an example of how to do that in the upcoming videos as well. But since this is a concept video, I thought I'd throw that in as just a little sneak peek. And that's pretty much all I got to say about overloading. Super, super, super important. All complex functions are going to have overloads for different types passed in as arguments. So hopefully that was helpful. If you've enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video where we're going to create this right here. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too.